Welcome to today's video guys. This is Patrick with Rugged Destinations. Today we're going to do a build breakdown on our 2021 Jeep Gladiator. We use this truck as an overland vehicle for a family of four. Amanda, myself, and our two sons just got back from Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. So we feel like our system is very well dialed at this point. We wanted to give you guys a rundown on all the parts that we're using for both on truck and for our camp. Everything that you see here has been installed by myself. This is a complete do-it-yourself build. So we're gonna talk about bumpers and armor. Starting off, we have a worn Elite Series steel bumper in the front. On the bumper, we have a Badlands or Harbor Freight 12,000 pound winch. That winch has worked fantastic for us. On the side of the truck, we have rock sliders. They are the factory Rubicon rock sliders that I purchased secondhand. Fear of the vehicle, we are running an AFN dual swing out bumper. We run our water on one swing out and our full size spare on the other swing out. This is also a steel bumper that has an integrated tow hitch. So it allows us to be able to tow our boat or any other trailers. On the smaller swing out on our bumper, we are running two Dometic 11 liter water jugs. These are mounted on the Belfab water jug carriers. Belfab has designed these carriers specifically to hold the Dometic water jugs. When we get to camp items, you'll see why this is so handy for us. We are running the TurboMac HD in bronze, and then we are running the Yokohama Geolander in a 37 12 5 17. This combination has been fantastic. It allows us the ability to air down and have a lot of sidewall. We're also running the Apex valve stems. Those allow us to air down very quickly. So another vital piece on our truck is the suspension. We are using the Dobinson three-way adjustable shocks. We are using Dobinson overload springs. In the rear, we have a 1,200 pound overload spring, and in the front, we have a 300 pound overload spring. This is the first suspension that we have found that allows us to be able to compensate for all of the extra weight we have added to the vehicle, especially in the rear. Three-way adjustability allows us to be able to adjust high and low speed compression and rebound all independently so that like when we were on the Alcan Highway, we were able to tune our suspension to match the speed and the road surface we were traveling on. Along with the Dobinson shocks and springs, we're also running a Dobinson adjustable steering stabilizer. This just makes those little bumps in the road not cause so much feedback into the steering wheel. On the front and the rear axle, we are running TerraFlex adjustable track bars. That allows me to center the axles underneath the vehicle after being modified for the increased ride height. We're also running Dobinson adjustable front lower control arms so that we can properly adjust our pinion angle and our vehicle's caster. So lighting is very important on an off-road vehicle. We find ourselves driving in inclement weather or at nighttime very often. For headlights, we're running an LED replacement bulb. This gives us much more broadcast from the factory halogens. For fog lights, we are running the Squadron Sport. I've wired those directly into the factory fog light switch. So anytime I'm driving down the road, I can get just a little bit of extra coverage with those amber fog lights. On the front bumper, we're running the Baja Designs Onyx 6 10 inch light bar. This is a very small light bar with very large output. I use this as a, a main driving light when we're off road. It creates a very, very hot spot in the middle of the road, right in front of the wheels and tires, which is where I need it. For ditch lights, we are running the Baja Designs LP6 Pros. This is an awesome light, definitely oversized for a typical ditch light, but I run them almost at an angle that makes them a hybrid ditch light and driving light. Once again, in the amber color to help cut through those tough road and weather conditions. So for an absolute nuclear option, our last ditch effort for inclement weather and nighttime driving, we have the 40 inch light bar from Front Runner. It integrates right into our rack that we'll cover in rack section. This wonderful cover makes it so that we can keep that light bar protected and keep that lens clean and clear of scratches. So to control all of the exterior lights on our vehicle, we use the Baja Designs S-Pod. 
This allows us one convenient place to control all of the lights and makes wiring all of those lights so much simpler. So the last piece of exterior lighting is the front runner scene lighting that's built into their hand grips. This is an extremely useful place to have lights. We're able to pull up to camp spots, use it to look for flat location or any obstacles that we might meet. And then it allows us to be able to set up camp with exterior light available. So communications are vital when you're off-road, especially in remote places. How we speak to the other vehicles in our convoy is through our radio. This is a Midland MXT 575. The nice part about this radio is that the head unit mounted up here could be mounted underneath your seat or anywhere behind your dash panels. All of the controls are through the handheld. We run about a three-pronged approach to communications. So we have our Midland radio, we also run a WeBoost Overland Drive Kit. That gives us an antenna on top of the vehicle and then an antenna inside of the vehicle with integrated with a booster that's mounted underneath the seat that boosts the cell signal that we have available. If we're in a spot where we typically would have maybe one bar of LTE, we will have four bars because of that booster. So that gives us the ability to talk to the outside world beyond just our convoy. The last component of communications is also navigation, it's in our Garmin Tread unit. We have in-reach technology, so it allows us to connect it to our phone and be able to two-way message with people via satellite communications. It also allows us to send an SOS signal should an extreme emergency happen and we need to have a life flight. We also have the Midland X-Talker handheld that we use for spotting in off-road situations or if we need to lend a radio to somebody on our convoy that doesn't have a radio mounted to their vehicle. And then as well, we have the X-Talker youth models that are perfect for the boys. That makes it so if we're in a camp where we don't have the fear of grizzly bears, we can let the boys adventure knowing that they can call right back to us either to the vehicle mounted unit or if we're sitting around the fire pit, we can have our handhelds as well. So for interior organization and a place to mount our Midland radio, we installed the American Adventure Labs aluminum molly panel for the front cab area. Having seat organizers on the back of both of the front seats gives the boys a place to put their radios, water bottles, books, anything that they might need. We also run a Radius Outfitters trash tube right here in the middle so that the boys have a place to ditch snack wrappers and anything else they might be working on. On the rear window, we run another Molly panel to be able to attach items. One of the most vital quick reach items that we don't need access to all the time is our MyMedic medical kit that hangs off of the Bali panel in the back. The next vital organizational piece is our front runner rack system. It does require that you drill a couple of holes through the top of your roof to be able to integrate with the roll bar and then it has these a-pillar brackets that come down and attach at the hood. On the rack, we're running two Wolfpack Pro mounts. We have our high lift jack mounted in the center. We run our Pro water tank from Front Runner up there. We have our traction boards, and it also gives us a place to mount our propane tank and our WeBoost antenna. So the Front Runner mid-height bed rack gives us a location to mount our Dometic tent and also a place to mount our front runner undermount table, which is a very convenient way to carry a table with you all the time and keep it out of the way when you don't need it, but conveniently accessible when you do. This is the Dometic CFX375DZ. The 75 means that it is a 75 liter size and DZ means that it has dual zones. So it has two doors. We can use one of the zones as a freezer to hold meat and other items at a deep freeze. And then the other as a refrigerator or any combination of both. We use the Dometic PLB40, which is a lithium battery bank that we charge through a 12 volt charge port that we mounted on the bedside itself. We find that we use the bedside mount to charge the PLB and then 
wire the fridge directly to the PLB40. This allows us to recharge our battery bank when we're driving and the fridge automatically is using the battery bank when we are not driving. So to easily access all of the items that we carry in our bed, we're using the front runner medium sized bed slide, which fits perfectly for the Jeep Gladiator. This allows us a durable and easy way to get to all of the items that we might need. Organize all of our camp items and our dry goods. We use a combination of the Front Runner Wolfpack Pros. These are a great option because they're weather sealed and they integrate very easily. You can stack them and they kind of lock in for transit. Another piece that we use are the Dometic 50 liter hard sided cases. These are awesome. They're also waterproof and dust proof and they're very easy to get open. So for camp items, one of the most important pieces is a camp chair. The front runner camp chair have been fantastic for that because they do break down so small. So for those cold nights and early mornings, having a fire is a huge help. Unfortunately, we deal with burn bans very regularly here in the Pacific Northwest. What's very convenient about a propane fire pit is you can still use it even during a burn ban. So our Ukiah propane fire pit has been a huge help. It allows us to have a fire during burn bans and it's very convenient to just turn it on, turn it off. The front runner table is a perfect option for us because it does undermount below our bed rack, but it also is just a fantastic table. It's super low profile, so it makes it easy for packing. It's lightweight and it's very easy to set up. Typically you'll find our KDAC stove living on top of the table. This is a super modular stove that has these grill attachments. It also has griddles, so it allows you to cook a variety of things with just one piece. So the last piece is our rooftop tent. This is the Dometic TRT 140 Air. It is an airframe tent, so it uses a compressor to blow up. What's convenient about this is that the setup and breakdown is so easy. One of our concerns going into using this tent was how it would handle the high winds on the ridge tops that we like to camp on. And we have found and proven through multiple uses that this tent handles wind load as good if not better than any rooftop tent that we have used. Well, thanks for watching today's video, guys. We really hope that it gives you some ideas for your Overland rig. And most importantly, we hope it encourages you to get out and travel with your family. So all of these parts that we have installed have been on the vehicle for at least six months or about 15,000 miles. We just completed a trip to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, which was 6,300 miles. So all of them we believe in very much so. If you would like to purchase any of these, please head down to the description below. You'll find links. These links do give us a slight kickback. They don't cost you any more money, and it's a great way to support us if you're interested in doing that. Another way that you can support us is by hitting that subscribe button. It really does help. Leave us a comment below if you have something that you'd like a more in-depth look into, or if you have another idea for a video. Thanks so much for watching, guys.